Welcome back to How to Be a Better DM, the official podcast of Monsters.Rent. I'm Justin Lewis. And I'm Tanner Wayland. And we are here to help you tell better stories for yourself and your players as you dungeon master sessions of D&D, Dungeons and Dragons. We'd like to give you some quick announcements. We actually have one before the show. And then after the show, if you want to stick around, we have some more announcements then as well. Uh, but first, let's talk about this. Tired of being alone? Are you tired of not having any of your players understand you? Are you tired of never truly belonging? Well, you're in luck. All you need to do is join the Guild. The Guild is a unique and exclusive experience that is only open to Dungeon Masters. It is a full community focused on helping ease your DMing burdens. Want to meet other DMs? Join the Guild. Want to discuss your homebrew ideas with people who would appreciate it instead of just telling your cat? Join the guild! Want to find a place where all your wildest dreams will come true? Join the guild! Go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free. Wait, that can't be right. Chuck, Chuck, can you check this again? Is this supposed to be... What? Oh, it's... They're serious? It's free? Oh. Okay, all right. Yes, go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free, even though they are crazy for giving this away for free. Common side effects may include burping, sneezing, laughing, breathing, hearing, listening, tasting, farting, critting, sarcasm, and in extreme cases, explosive diarrhea. Awesome. With that out of the way, we can get into today's show. Last time, our adventurers found themselves fighting a rug of smothering, which had completely smothered Ulv. Luckily, the group was able to dispatch the rug rather quickly and were able to continue on their journey. The group then entered what appeared to be a library. This library seemed completely empty, which caused minor consternation for the whole group. The group then entered what seemed like a small plush office that had only three books of interest. Two of the books were about necromancy and curses, and the last book turned out to be the first journal of Anandra. Contemplating this turn of events, the group re-entered the library only to find it was now filled with books. The group decided to investigate various books, but as soon as they did, the books seemed to animate and started attacking the party. Our adventurers discovered the doors were locked and after trying to light the books on fire, they realized the books weren't going anywhere. After taking a brief break in the small office they'd found, the group set out with a new plan that turned out to be the right one. The group ended up finding the second journal of Anandra, which triggered all the animated books to stop attacking them. At this point, the group had explored all the first level of the manor, so they decided to finish Odds and Ends before going back to Gamaliel and asking their question. This led the group to experiment with the Grey Potion, and that this potion ended up turning everyone in the group into a Faded, a being who is neither dead, alive, nor undead, but something in between. As soon as this happened, the group was finally able to take the stairs down into the basement. Who knows what the group will uncover down there. As you walk down the stairs, you notice your surroundings are in muted tones. All the world, it seems, has lost its color. You reach the bottom and you find yourself in a long room with a second set of stairs on the far side of the room that lead up. This room is empty, aside from pillars interspersed throughout the room holding it up. There are doors on your right and your left. You also notice writing along the walls of this room similar to the writing in the Great Hall directly above you. What would you like to do? Welcome back to the seventh episode of How to Be a Better DM. I'm your host, and we are here to help you tell better stories while you DM a session of Dungeons & Dragons 5e with your friends. In this show, I share some things that have helped me as a DM so you can enjoy this wonderful, wonderful game. Before we get to today's show, another shout out to Couchy Audio, who does the audio work for this show. So if you need help audio-wise, you can reach out to him at K-A-H-O-O-T-A-Z on Instagram. That's at K-A-H-O-O-T-A-Z on Instagram, and he will hook you up. He's awesome. So let's get to today's show. Today, let's get simple and quick and talk about my method for planning in between sessions. Now, this isn't a perfect method. I'm not a perfect DM, but it's certainly helped me and hopefully it can help you. So, number one, I always start off with writing a recap. Some people might riff 
on this recap just at the beginning of the session as most people do, but I find it very helpful and much more helpful than just riffing to write it down beforehand. Doing so actually does two things for me. First of all, it helps remind me what happened in the previous session. You know, rarely do I start preparing the next session right after the previous one. Usually it's late and I'm going to bed. Uh, but it's also great to let the players know what happened last time. Sometimes it's been weeks, months maybe. Uh, it's, it's hard to remember these things. The second thing it does for me is it helps get my brain juices flowing. It's, it's a lot easier for me to think of new things after I've had this simple exercise of just summarizing as eloquently and interesting way as possible what happened last time. Uh, so, you know, if you need an example of what summarizing an episode looks like, just go back to the beginning of today's episode and listen to a little snippet at the beginning. That was actually what I wrote down for my previous session of my campaign that I play with my friends. So you can use that as kind of a template or an example. Number two is I figure out what generally happens next. Now, you might be saying, duh, uh, but this is a little bit more nuanced. You know, I mean, if the party is currently in a dungeon or going through some sort of fortress or something where they're geographically locked in, kind of, it's kind of easy. You just look at the map and see wherever the players are going next logically. Now, they can always pull an audible or something and just decide to leave unless you stop them like I tend to do. But essentially, you just pick which rooms they haven't been in, you figure out what happens in those rooms. Now, if you're using an adventure guidebook, this means reading ahead in the book to understand what should probably happen next. And one thing I also like to do is ask the players what they think their characters will want to do next. And this is if they're not constrained by geography, like if they're not in some sort of castle, cave system, or whatever. If they can move freely, basically. And if I'm not using a guidebook, I like to think about all the possible places the characters might go. Because more than anything, D&D is kind of about logistics. It's about getting the right weapons, skills, and people in the right places, essentially, right? So if you understand where the group plans to go, you can prepare adequately. You can assume what might happen, you know? You, you know, I, I try to write down, jot down a few logical places that they might go and then some sequences of events should the players go to those locations. And let me give you a warning, you know, be prepared. Sometimes players will just choose never to go to places you've prepared. That's okay. You'll get over it. In fact, one example in my campaign, I prepared kind of a, a similar haunted mansion, though much, much smaller, that the group just decided not to even investigate. It's whatever. And, you know, if you feel like this is too much like 40 chess, like you can't really anticipate your players as moves, then don't. Just, just constrain them. Say, for example, they've been tasked to find an ancient artifact, and there are really no clues, so their journey could take them anywhere. One thing you might do is say, after an investigation check in this town, you've discovered that talk of this artifact originated in this specific area. There are four towns in that area and each have extensive libraries, blah, 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 or some such nonsense, you know. Just give them choices, but slightly constrain them so that way you don't necessarily have to plan what happens if they go in every single city in your fantasy world. And you don't necessarily have to be specific in this, you can be somewhat vague. Just have a general idea of what happens should they go to this place or that place. That's number two. Number three, this is where I remember to look up rules I'd forgotten or create items that I'd given to the party without really knowing what they do. <clears throat> Don't judge me. I use this extra time to fill in the odds and ends that really flesh out the campaign. Step two was creating the framework of what happens in the session. In this step, step number three, I add in the cool details. This is where you can go to find the cool maps that make the game really fun, but that are not necessarily necessary. Or, or you can work on your collection of minis, painting them or whatnot. Or you can craft new NPCs that aren't essential, or you can think of lists of cool items to give your, your characters that they don't necessarily need. Uh, here's just where you get to add in the cool details. You can also bring up interests that the characters have mentioned in game. And Neverwinter's really far from where they are. So the chances that they go there, very slim. But in this step, it might be really good to flesh out what could happen should they go to Neverwinter. So that way, if in the odd chance they do, you're prepared. It's always nice to have just a little bit extra prepared in case the group decides to go down whatever rabbit hole you've somehow laid in front of them. Because believe me, having something prepared is so much easier than improvising. So remember, number one, you've got to do the recap. That's essential, that's like the foundation. Number two, you think of the general steps of what's gonna happen next, so like the groundwork, the foundation, the, the, the not the foundation, the frame. And then number three, you add in the extras. This is where you, you make 
you add in the details, you flesh out whatever is going to happen. So that way it's not just general ideas, but it, you get really specific. So that's my method and it's pretty simple. Uh, it's not too complex. Hopefully it helps you, um, but I'd love to hear your method. So how do you go about planning your sessions? You know, message me on Instagram at Geronimo Levis. I'd love to hear from you and, and see what things you do to plan your sessions. Also, if you're interested in sponsoring the show, go ahead and reach out to me also on Instagram. Uh, I'd love to talk to you and talk to any suggestions you guys have and then just, just reach out. I'd love to start up conversations about the show and see what you think. Uh, that does it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. Come back for next week's episode and another show if you get the chance. Um, also, please, if, if you have the opportunity, please leave a rating and review to help the show be discovered by even more people. That would go so far in just spreading this and hopefully helping that poor little person who's trying to DM but has never done it and doesn't have any resources. I mean, I don't know if they're out there because the internet exists, but maybe they're out there. Anyways, until next time, guys, let's roll initiative. Thank you for listening to today's show. Uh, we really appreciate your support and your patronage. We have a few more announcements to go over. Uh, first, did you ever fall in love with the library as a kid? It was a place where you could experience a thousand stories without having to buy a thousand books. That is what Monsters at Rent can do for your D&D &D campaign. You can rent and swap out as many quality miniature monsters and creatures for your D&D &D party as you could ever want without having to buy them. You can rescue villagers from a kobold camp or lead your party through the fighting forest or many more adventures. We're coming out with new bundles all the time. Just sign up for our subscription to get access to your own personal library of minis. Go to monsters.rent to find out more. That's the website, monsters with an S dot rent. Get your library pass to a world of minis today. We also wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Stardust and Dragons. I'm going to let one of the cast of Stardust and Dragons, Christian Hatcher, and his crew tell you a little bit more about it. This August, a new adventure podcast is coming to a platform near you, filled with action. You one of the two of them. We can't hey. keep taking hits like that. Drama. Everything that she's been doing, every, everything she's going to do finally sets in and stardust help help <coughs> someone please find out more about this epic odyssey at stardustanddragons.com where adventure awaits in the stars that's all the announcements we have today again thank you so much for everything you do for us you make this show possible like we said before we'll be back next week with another great episode and until then let's go ahead and roll initiative